thinking about all this diversity, all this sometimes misunderstanding or misconceptualization uh, between the Muslim world and the, the Western world, I might you know, suggest some, uh, some points uh, to explain why things are different and why we need to understand each other. And let me start by, uh, by this thing that the other should not be looked at as only the other, which means different to them myself. I, I suppose the other should be perceived as the mirror through which the self can see itself in another, in another light. And the history of human race proves this, this, this point. Suppose, uh, for some reason, uh, Islam did not, uh, uh, did not cross the boundary of, Ara of Arabia. And the Muslims, the early Arab who adhered to Islam, did not go and establish their empire uh, in Damascus first, and then in Baghdad, and then went to Egypt, and became in contact with the, the cultures of the world. What would be the image of Islam if this did not happen? So what we are proud of as Islamic civilization is the outcome of this interaction between the early Muslim community and the entire world and the, the movement of translation and the movement of cultural interaction. So we should think about the history of the world, uh, the history of this kind of cultural interaction, cultural conversation. The other is very, very important for the self to know itself. It's like looking into the, the, the mirror. If you wake up in the morning and you look into the mirror and you realize that you need to shave, you need to change your clothes. If you don't look into a mirror, you are very happy with yourself. So this is something that we have to appreciate, that we are different. This is at least very, very Quranic. I mean, according to the Quran, that God created humans in nations, and tribes with different colors, different languages, in order to know each other. And here, in order to know each other, because you cannot know yourself. You know yourself through communicating with, with the other, with different language. Uh, the history of Islam is not as much similar or comparable to the history of Christianity. Okay. Christianity was born within a very religious community, which is the Jewish community in the Middle East. And this Jewish community in the Middle East was part of an empire, the Roman Empire, with its law, with its system, its administration, with its organization. So it's not surprising that we don't find in Christianity any, anything about the law, about administration, because there was, you know, Caesar was there. And therefore, to obey Caesar and to obey God was the demand of, uh, of, of, of the gospel, uh, which means Christianity was born in an already established political empire. It took 400 years or 300 years until Christianity was adopted as the official religion of the empire and he restarted all the problems uh, 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 concerning intolerance, etc., etc., etc. The story of the emergence of Islam is different. Islam emerged in a non-unified political entity. There was no state, there was no empire, nothing in Mecca where Islam emerged. There was the tribes, okay? And the tribes were all the time in conflict, in, in war against each other for the land, for water. Uh, so Islam emerged here as a very important call, spiritual and ethical call for social justice. I mean, if we read 
the early Quranic revelation, it's all about justice. It's all about, about the poor and the needy. So what, 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 what we have here is we can say, for example, in Islam, revelation is a given fact. The primary and essential given fact. While in, in, in Greek philosophy, there was no revelation. It's reason, the logos. It's reason. Okay. This is a big difference about the constitute constituent element in the two civilization. Uh, in Islamic civilization, revelation is a given fact that could never be uh, disregarded. With all the development that happened in the Muslim world, in the Muslim civilization, with all the translation, philosophies, mysticism, uh, theology, literature, in all this intellectual activity, and social construction and political construction, revelation played and it will always play a prominent role. Because it was from the very beginning the only given fact, the only source of knowledge. Muslim philosophers, Muslim thinkers did not disregard reason. They tried their best to bring reason and revelation together, to harmonize the finding of reasons and the meaning of revelation, to upgrade the meaning of revelation, to meet the findings of, of reason. The history of Islamic philosophy is the history of this effort, not to disregard reason, neither to disregard revelation. The history of, of Western civilization took different, you know, different courses. Uh, I don't have to go into the details of this, but we know that Nietzsche, for example, have already said, well, talked about the death of God. And in struct structuralist philosophy talked about the death of man because of all the atrocity caused in the context of modernity, two world wars, so there was so great, great feeling of mistrust of, of, of modernity, or at least of the expectation that modernity would bring into the world the integrity, integrity and dignity of the human being. So there was two announcement. In, in, in the Islamic tradition, there is no announcement like that. God is still alive and the human being is still alive. So this is also something we have to, to see the different historical background, which is very important to understand in order to try our best to avoid misunderstanding.